Welcome to our channel Knowledge Hub where we are going to conduct a mock interview test for scoring a perfect 8 plus band in IELTS. But before we get started, let me give you a few brief facts about IELTS speaking. First, it is one of the toughest exam because it's a subjective exam. You give the exact same answer to 10 different examiners and they'll score you differently. Next, the structure of IELTS speaking includes three sections. The first section has three to four questions which are about you, yourself. The second section is a cue card section where they'll give you a topic and you have to speak on it for at least a minute or two. And the third section is a follow-up set of questions related to the second cue card that you got. Here, you have to give some extended answers which should be relatively longer versus what you gave in part one. Next, you are tested on four aspects, vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and your fluency. Next, some suggestions for you. Firstly, avoid repetition. Don't use the same word often. For example, instead of saying my friend, my friend, my friend, you can say my friend, my pal, my buddy. Start watching a lot of English videos so you get accustomed to some common English slangs. Like for example, instead of saying my house, my home, you can say my place. Lastly, you should not give short answers for all the questions. Excuse me? Yes, please. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a software engineer. That was a short answer. Now without further ado, let's get into the mock interview. Okay, let's get started. Mm -hmm. This is the speaking test for the International English Language Testing System. Candidate is Jay Anand and the candidate number is 540431. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you tell me your full name, please? My full name is Jay Anand. And how should I call you? You can address me by my first name, Jay. Okay, so let's get started with part one. Do you work? Yes, I work as a software engineer in a company called Google. My job is to create and test softwares. Okay. And what is your place of work like? It's a nice place. I have good pool of talent there who are very collaborative in approach and they help you a lot daily. So I really like working there. Okay. And what do you like about your job? The things I like about my job are firstly, they give you a lot of autonomy in designing your own product. And secondly, the work-life balance. So that's pretty uncommon these days in other companies. Okay. And is there anything that you don't like about your job? The only thing is, it's pretty far from my place. I have to do a healthy amount of commute daily, which I don't like. Uh, if I could get an option of a hybrid work culture where I can have two to three days working from home, that would be ideal. Okay, so let's move to part two now. <clears throat> I'll give you a topic on cue card and you'll get one minute to think about it. So your topic would be, describe a special event or festival that you liked, say what the event was, where it was, what happened, and say why you liked it. Here's your cue card. Thank you so much. I think we are good to go. So I will talk about my five-year-old's birthday party, which we organized at his favorite destination, the Kiddie Land. All his friends were invited, and most of them did turn up with their parents. The event started around 4 p.m. with a magic show, and the magician was spectacular. He left the audience in awe with his tricks. After that, we had some light snacks where the parents were enjoying those while the kids hit the dance floor. My kid was jumping from one place to other all the time. Then we had the cake cutting ceremony where we brought in his favorite Spider-Man cake. And after that, we had the dinner. Around 9 p.m. we bid farewell to everyone and headed back home. At home, my kid was in a hurry to unwrap all his gifts. And I was amazed to see so many educational toys gifted to him. I was really happy about that. And that is the event I relish a lot. Okay. So why do you think celebrations are important in society? To that, I would say celebrations are a platform where you get to meet your distant relatives and friends for whom you don't generally get time so often. Your work schedule is so busy and your life is full of stress. So in these events, you go and you talk to a lot of people, you get relaxed. Also, you are abreast of what's happening in their lives as well. Right. <clears throat> do you think celebrations are experienced differently by different generations? I support that fact and the reason I say that is because when I was a kid and I used to go to these celebrations, I was just talking to my cousins playing around. But now as I see myself when I go to these events, I have a lot of responsibility as well. Inviting people sometime, looking after the dinner, watching over the kids. So as you grow older, you have responsibilities and how that is how you differ a lot when you see the celebrations now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about uh, international events now. Mm -hmm. Do you think international events help to promote cooperation and collaboration between countries? I have a slightly different opinion here. I think that international events are good in bringing together people. So for example, the cricket match that happened between India and Pakistan, 
the audience and supporters were in the same stadium they were discussing things together which was good to see but as far as cooperation is concerned i think political intent is another factor that plays a major role here if the political intent is strong then these events would act as a catalyst in bringing the cooperation and collaboration but if the political will is not there then i think these events won't help too much all right okay thank you so much we are done with our speaking test thank you so Here much we go now Thanks, stick here. Coming on to the feedback, I think it was an easy eight because the grammar usage was good, pronunciation was fine, the fluency of English was okay. It did not appear that the person was stressing too much in talking in English. And lastly, I would say he took a good amount of time in organizing the thoughts for part two, which is very important. If you get a cue card and you jump straight on it, that's bad. You have to organize your thought in a structured manner so when you deliver, the person gets to understand what exactly you're talking about. If you have any questions please post them in the comment section please subscribe to our channel if you like our content and we'll be creating such more engaging content so that you can take on your next IELTS exam